Hello and welcome to episode 2 on image blending. In this video I'm going to demonstrate another way to use blend modes to blend two images together and we're also going to look at the blend if feature in the layer styles. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and grab these two images. You'll see that I have one is an image just out of camera, you know, turned into a TIFF and then a, another image that is a texture layer. So we're going to go ahead, drag those over and open up in Photoshop. So we're going to go ahead and select both. We're going to hold down the shift key and turn, open these up as smart objects. This will allow us to go back into Photoshop Camera Raw pretty easily. This would be the technique you would need to use if you were using an older version for people, uh, older version than the Creative Cloud. Uh, for people with Creative Cloud, you'll find that there's a Camera Raw filter under the filter menu. All right, so now we have our two layers. So we have our Tidal Basin layer and we have our texture layer. So we'll start off with the Tidal Basin layer. And you'll see here that there is, um, it's really kind of blown out, very light sky, um, kind of a, an off day, although I liked the image and I liked the moment in the scene. So we're gonna try to work with this. To, the first things we're gonna do is actually tone this down a little bit by going back into Camera Raw. So if you've opened this up as a smart object, directly from Camera Raw, you'll be able to double click here to go back to it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If not, you would, and you're in Creative Cloud, you can use the filter Camera Raw to get to this point. So first things first, let's bring down the exposure just a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast. You'll see here that we have some blown out highlights in the top left of this image in the tree. Up here, you'll see the little red. That's because I've got my highlights uh, signal on here, so that's why it's red. But instead of continuing to drag down the exposure, which I actually think I might have done a little bit too much, I, I can actually use a different uh, tool in here to do that. So we're going to go ahead and use the graduated filter tool. So that's this icon here. And we're going to go ahead, use that, decrease our exposure a little bit, and then go ahead and drag and pull. Now it's a little bit dark, made a little bit too much, so we'll just back that off until we start seeing the red peak back through. So you know, we're probably good right about there. All right. now. The next thing we might want to do here is to go ahead and add a little bit of sharpening. So we're going to go ahead and choose the Details tab over here on the right. We're in the Page 6 tabs to, to begin with. We're going to go ahead and choose Detail. You can see that it says Sharpening here. We're going to have to just pull that up away so we don't care how much. We just want to add some sharpening. And the reason we want to do this is because there's a trick. Right now, we've sharpened everything. And you can see that the ground is sharper, even you know everything, all the leaves all have sort of a crunchy look to it. And the more we drag to the right, the crunchier it's gonna get. So we don't necessarily want everything in this particular image sharpened, but the way to use the, there's a masking, and the way to use it is you have to add some sharpening so that the effect is happening. And then we can go ahead and hold down the Option Alt key and click on the mask carrot. So once we do that, you see that everything goes to white, and that's because everything in the image is currently being sharpened. But if we don't want that, while holding down the Alt or Option key on the keyboard, we start dragging this little carrot to the right. And you'll start to see that black is coming into the image. The further we drag, the more we're refining the mask that's getting sharpened. So now when we look at this, the things that are being sharpened, the edge of the tidal basin, the monument in the back, the leaves, the bench up front, and the leaves on the ground. So that's perfect. So now we can just let go. Now we're able to take the sharpening and set this where we want it, depending on our image. So I'm going to back it off a little bit because I want a little bit of sharpening, but not a whole bunch. All right, so if we go back to the basics, we can decide at this point if we want to add some clarity, we can do that. If we want to add a little bit of vibrance, bring out the colors a little bit, we can do that as well. So lots of choices once you're in Camera Raw. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time processing this image, the rest of this image, because I want to get onto the blending technique, but I just wanted you to see that it could do that, how it's done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. So you see that effect taking place. Now we're going to go back to our texture layer. In this particular case, I don't feel compelled about changing anything on this texture. I like the texture the way that it is. So what we're going to do is choose our Move tool, which is up here on the upper right. Go ahead and grab um, the four arrow tool. You'll see that the mouse now has the four arrows with it. We're going to left click and hold, drag our image and hover over the tab for the tile basin, drag our mouse back in and drop the texture. Now we can move this around. Now it turns out that these images are actually the same size, so we just need to line them up and get them settled. We don't need to do any kind of transforming. 
Now that the image is in here, we can start manipulating it. Now with some experimentation, I've already determined which blend mode I like best, but let's like take a look at a few to see how they interact. Now what the blend modes do, when you bring in a layer, it's always set to normal, and the blend modes work in this way. The first one, uh, of course, being normal, then the next, the, the, section, the next section is these five, these all darken the image. So let's take a look really quick. When we choose darken, you'll see kind of how it works out. The darker pixels from the bottom layer are now blended into the image. So it's kind of an interesting effect, but you don't get the top of the monument and you start to lose a few things in here. So it's kind of cool, but maybe not what we're looking for. If we choose multiply, you can see that everything kind of gets darker. You get all the structure in the background. This is kind of a cool effect. We have to think about whether we're going to come back to that. Let's go to the next section. So this, sec this next section in the blending modes says start with lighten. And basically, these all of these modes lighten the image in some way. So if we choose lighten, all we're going to get from the bottom layer are the lighter pixels. So we don't like that at all. It didn't work. Try screen. Screen lightens everything. So much like multiply, which darkens it, screen lightens everything. Maybe not so much for this particular image. Now often, when we're using textures, we're going to go to our contrast uh, sort of blend modes, which start with overlay. What I have found is that this didn't work really well for this particular image. Is that even though it added contrast, there was so many areas that were blown out, it actually just makes it look like there's no texture at all and just some muddiness in the corners. So we don't like that. We'll try soft light, a little bit better, but not, but not by much. So I think in this particular inst instance, these particular blend modes are not gonna work. But I did like the way that multiply works. So we're gonna go back and choose multiply. Now right off the bat, I already like the image. It's a little bit dark, but I really like the effect that it has. So what I want to try to do is figure out how do I lighten up part of this image, but keeping a nice vignette at the same time. So let's think about how we can do this. One, I could use opacity, bringing down the opacity. But the problem is now we're losing our texture again. That doesn't really work either. And yes, you can find a middle range that you might be happy with, but it's really, I don't know, not as cool in my opinion. So we're going to leave opacity for now at 100% we could use a mask. So go ahead, select the layer with the texture, come down to the bottom, choose our mask. We get a mask. As I've said before in other tutorials, white reveals. So this white mask is revealing the entire texture blended with multiply. But if we want to make some kind of a change to that, then we need to paint with black. Now we could choose the brush and paint with black. Kind of a strong effect. I could manipulate my brush opacity and flow but I don't think that this is really the best way because it's still going to be hard to control the edge. So we're going to go ahead and back up, which we can do by edit and then step back. I just used the keystroke. So is there another way? Well, we can use the gradient tool. Now this is a great tool to use. If you don't see it on your toolbar, go ahead and check it out because it's probably underneath the paint bucket. But we're going to go ahead and choose gradient tool. Now, want to make sure that our foreground is set to black and if you're not sure you can just toggle back and forth or hit the X key to get black in the foreground. Now we want to come up and we want to make sure that we're on black to transparent in our gradient selection. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. And In this particular case I am on the radial gradient which means it's going to make a circle as opposed to the linear which will make a straight line. So how does this work? Well, you know, it's starting to light up the center a little bit, so that's kind of cool. But what happens is that it's starting to actually take out the texture itself and maybe get too bright. So maybe we back it up a step and call that good. It's possible. We have our opacity down at 50%, so we could manipulate the opacity. So let's step back one more time to get it back to the original. So we bring our opacity up, say 75. Now we try it again, see what we get. So it's kind of working, it's okay. You can sit and play with this and get to where you want to get to that way so that your subject is standing out. In, my, in this case, the subject is sort of just the center, everything for me under the arch of the tree. But let's try another method, see what we get to. So we're going to back up one more time. And in this particular case, um, I could leave the mask or I can get rid of it. So for now, I'm going to get rid of it. Just right click and choose uh, delete mask. So we're back to our sort of original two layers. Let's try blend if. So to get to the layer styles, you can actually come under layer and choose layer style and get, have all your blending options 
but I find the easiest way is just to double click on the layer you want to use the layer styles. So just double click in this open space to the right. Now that we're in here, you'll see that we have some options and we're going to start playing with this blend if option. You have your darks, your lights, and you have this layer and the underlying layer. So in this particular case, this layer is the texture layer. The underlying layer is the monument. So we're going to go ahead and play around. Now if we say, if we just grab the darks and say blend this layer if dark, and we start pulling to the right, well what's happening is you're blending through only the dark layers from below, and there's a lot of darkness in below, so that came in really strong while the layer starts to disappear. So that's not attractive at all. Go ahead, we'll drag that back. Now if we say blend this layer if lighter, well what do we get? Okay, well, now we're telling it, okay, we'll blend it if it's a lighter area. Well, it's so bright in the background that we kind of have this same effect, which is really this really strong vignette around the outside. It looks blotchy and awful, so no good. We might try playing with the underlying layer, underlying layer and see what we get. But so far, I'm not happy with these results. Just not working the way I think that it should. Well, here's a trick. You can actually split these carrots and have more of an effect on the mid-tones, starting with sort of mid to light tones and mid to dark tones. So to do that, you actually hold the Alt or Option key and then select the carrot. And now you can see here on the right that the carrot has been split in half, and I'm only going to manipulate the left-hand side. So again, holding the Alt key, I'm going to start backing this down, and we're going to see what we can get you can start to see the center opening up a little bit and it's really nicely uh, faded. There's a really nice feather on the way this is working. I still have my texture built in here, but in, you know, throughout. So it sort of feels cohesive, but it's lightened up a little bit. So for me, this effect really works well on this particular image. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now from here, we can make some other decisions. We could spend some time clone out the uh, cranes in the background. We could add back a layer mask and continue to manipulate it. We could change the opacity of the layer if it was all a little bit too dark. Anything that you want at this point, all of those options are still available to you. If you felt compelled to do additional work on either of the layer within Camera Raw, you would just double click your little icon here in the bottom corner of these thumb tabs and be able to go right back into Camera Raw to continue working. Super easy and super fast. Stay tuned for another example. Okay, so this example is going to actually be a little bit different. We're actually going to work with contrast to blend some images and we're going to actually blend three layers together. So let's get our images selected. We're going to start off with these flowers, this blue texture, and this bokeh overlay. Go ahead and select your images and take them into Photoshop. All right, so here we are. We're back in uh, camera raw again and in this particular case I don't really need these to be in camera raw as I open them so I'm going to go ahead select all the images and just say open images let Photoshop do its work all right here we go so here's a bokeh overlay here's the texture image here's the image we're going to manipulate the texture image and the bokeh overlay are actually images created by Joe Olives. So if you're new to textures, what you want to make sure that you are using is really, they need to be really high quality. In fact, the texture used in the image with the title basin is also a Joe Olives over, um, texture. He does great quality work full resolution images, you want to make sure that if you're going to blend textures into your images that you're using high quality. If you're not using a high quality texture, you're actually going to degrade the image that you're blending into. So that's something to be careful of if you're going to download like free textures on the internet. Don't use a texture that's 400 pixels on its longest side. These images are 4,000 pixels on its longest side. So it's really important to make sure you're using quality with so you don't like ruin the overall image just because of the texture. Um, and Joe, Joe Olives is a great way to get textures if you don't have them already or don't know how to build them. So that's a shout out to him for his great work. All right, so in this particular case, we're not going to start with our uh, bokeh. We're going to actually start with our blue texture. We're going to pull that texture into the daffodil image. So as before, we're going to go ahead, either hit the V key or choose the move tool from the upper right of the toolbar. And we're going to like left click and hold, drag, let it change images, drag our mouse back into the middle of our image, and let go. Now in this particular instance, you can see that we have a, a 
rectangle portrait image of the daffodil and a square image of the um, texture. But we don't want to necessarily start manipulating the shape of this yet because we do not want it to degrade by as, as we change it. So because we're going to change its shape, this is where I would switch it back into a smart object, at least for the moment. So to do that, we're going to come over to where it says layer one in our layers panel, and right click and choose convert to smart object. When I'm starting to size images, whether it's a texture like this or images in a composite, I like to put them in as smart images because then I'm not going to lose uh, quality as I go large and small. And since I'm not exactly sure what my end result's always going to be, I like to be in a smart object at least until I'm ready and set um, on its final transformation. So now that we're in a smart image, as you can, a smart object, you can see by the little icon here on the thumbnail, we can choose free transform, which is edit, free transform, or Command or Control T. That gives us bounding bars. So now we can see the edge of the texture layer. In this particular instance, I'm just going to drop the corner in where it belongs. And now without holding the Shift key, I'm going to take the bottom corner and drag it to match. So now we've completely laid this on top of our daffodils. If you wanted to retain its perspective, you would have hold the Shift key and then the image would manipulate. You might use that if you were. I don't know, dropping a balloon into a sky. You wouldn't want the balloon to change or distort its shape, so you would hold the shift key as you were making it larger or smaller. But in this case, that wasn't necessary. So to uh, keep our transformation, you can either hit the check, check mark at the top, or you can hit enter, and it'll be retained. Perfect, we're all set. Now, because I'm not gonna change the shape of this again, and it's easier for the next step and the next technique to not have a smart, uh, smart object, I'm going to rasterize it. So I right click again, choose rasterize layer. And this basically takes it back to the, to the layer style that it was or the layer type that it was, not a smart object anymore. Now, here we can play again with our blending modes, darken. Well, that doesn't really work, way too dark, multiply. Well, still too dark. In fact, it didn't only leave the light, the dark pixels from the bottom layer through, but it's darkened the whole thing down. Not very pretty. Lighten. Well, lighten is letting the lighter uh, pixels through, so now our flowers are showing, but it doesn't look very good. Again, we try screen, much too washed out, at least for the, what I'm trying to achieve today. So let's try our contrast. Let's try overlay. Not too bad but kind of dark, so let's try soft light. Still adds a nice level of contrast, but much better looking. So I sort of like this overall effect, but one of the things I don't like is the fact that here's this texture swipe right here. I've got, I've got texture on this you know, really beautiful flower. And for what I'm looking for, I sort of like the texture everywhere else, but I don't want this flower to have texture. So how am I gonna get rid of that? Well, if I actually use a brush or um, the gradient tool here, I will actually remove, so if I add a mask, say I use the gradient tool again and I remove it, I've actually removed not only the texture, but the tone. And that's not really what I want. I mean, it could be what I want. This looks nice. This is a, a choice. I mean, I could leave it this way. There's nothing wrong with it now. But in this particular instance, I actually liked the cool tone on the whole image. So to not lose that, what I need to do is like, we'll get rid of the layer mask. We're actually just going to get rid of the texture as it is on the daffodil. So let me show you how you do that. First step, we're going to go back to normal for just a few seconds. So now we're looking at our texture layer. Second step is to go ahead and grab the eyedropper tool. So it's right up here. Eyedropper, we get a lot of choices here, but we're gonna pick the top one for eyedropper tool. You'll see that now our mouse looks like a little dropper. What we wanna do is, you know, you see we have colors here. If you have odd colors and you wanna get back to black and white, you just hit the D key on the keyboard that switches you back to black and white. If you wanna go from black to white, you can just hit the X key to bounce back and forth between the colors. In this particular case though, I wanna use my dropper and I wanna change my foreground color. So to do that, I go ahead and take the dropper and I wanna find a medium sort of color within my texture. So we're gonna aim it right around here. Also, it's where the daffodil is just about sitting. So I'm gonna choose this, I'm just gonna click. Now, you can see that that turned the top part, which is your foreground color, to blue. You can look over on the right here and see that now we have white and blue instead of white and black. Now. We're gonna grab our brush tool or hit the B key. So now we're in a brush. 
we want to make sure that our brush is fairly soft, not 100% soft, but fairly soft. And now we can switch back to soft light so we can see our daffodil. Now we're going to paint. So we're going to paint on the layer with the texture. And what you're going to see happen here is the texture is going to like be removed from the daffodil, but the color tone is going to remain. So it gets a little bit brighter because we used a medium color and some of this area had a darker blue there. But overall, the tone is there. The bluer tones are there. So let's go ahead. We're going to make our brush a little smaller. To do that, use the um, left and right bracket key. Come up, make it bigger again. Just mix it a little bit faster. A little bit sloppy there on the edge. You want to be careful because this doesn't have an erase, so if you start to misalign, you're going to actually have to back up to fix it. You're not going to be able to just undo, uh, like using the eraser tool or um, like with a mask where you could switch back and forth between black and white. Okay. All right, excellent. So as you can see, we've kept the cool blue tone. We haven't really changed very much, but we have gotten rid of the texture that uh, was sitting, particularly here on this large petal. So we're all set with that. So that's kind of a cool trick. Again, we just want to emphasize what we're doing. If I turn off the daffodil, now you can see exactly what we've done. We've used the same colors that are in this area of the texture, but by painting, we've actually removed the texture. So it's kind of cool. Um, now that we're done with that, let's play with the uh, bokeh layer. So we come back over, do the same thing that we did before, which was get the move tool. Go ahead, left click and hold, hover over our daffodils, come on in, drop. Now here we go. We had the bokeh layer was actually also a portrait um, sort of shape. It was a rectangle, but it wasn't in portrait, it was in landscape, and we need it to be in portrait. So how are we going to fix this? Well, while this layer is selected in this move moment, we can come over here, use free transform, or actually not free transform, just transform, and rotate clockwise or counterclockwise as the case may be. But in this case, we're going to go clockwise and let it go. And boom, turns around. We're going to go ahead. It's bigger than our daffodil, so that's OK. We're just going to drop it right on top. Kind of line it up, hit enter. Now, it's here, it's set. Same thing as we did before, we're going to play a little bit and figure out which blend mode works best. Darken, not so much. Multiply, again, makes the whole image way too dark. Lighten, mm, sort of interesting, but not quite right. Screen, everything's washed out, so that's not going to work. So we're going to go back to our contrast blend modes. Overlay, it's OK, pretty strong effect. Try a soft light little bit better. So what you will find with most of your texture blending is that soft light's the way to go. Um, it just really depends on the image, but for by and large, uh, the overlay and soft light probably are the ones you're going to use like 90% of the time. So here we are again. Now what you can see is that we have these bokeh highlights sitting on top of the same petals where we just removed the texture. Not the result we want. They really are, they really do belong actually in the background of the image. So how are we going to fix that? Same exact way that we just fixed it on the back, on the texture. So first off, we're going to go back to normal. We're going to grab our eyedropper tool one more time, come over to the middle of the image here. And in this case, we'll pick a little bit lighter color. It'll keep it light. So we're going to click here. Didn't pick it up. There we go. So I had to tap it a little bit harder. So you can see now that we've gone from white and blue to white in this sort of uh, lighter green color. Now we can go back to soft light, come back to the brush tool, increase our brush a little bit so it goes a little bit faster. And you can see that because we picked a lighter color, it's lightening up. But what you also can tell is that the circles from the bokeh highlights are disappearing off of our daffodil. And now they only sit in the background, which is exactly what we were looking for. So let's finish this up. I'm kind of going fast. If you were doing this at home on an image, you'd want to spend a little time with it. Make sure you get your edges right. All right, perfect. So we're done. Now, we can still make manipulations to this. We might decide that there's too much 
high, spectral highlight. So we can just back this off with the opacity. That works. You might find that the over the texture layer is just too dark. You can change the opacity of that as well and manipulate it. If you like that, but you want to open it up a little bit in a different way, we can add a layer mask, use our gradient tool, make sure that we're on black to transparent. In this particular case, I'd still want to be on the radial version of it, and I can start you know, just adding a mask. The thing is, is that what that does is take the texture off, and so I'm not sure that that's really the approach I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead, delete that layer mask in this case, and maybe just manipulate the opacity. Now you can also add brightness. You can add a, you know, brightness and contrast layer, and just open it up this way as well. Lots of choices. Um, now, if you wanted to say make the daffodil on the the primary daffodil a little bit sharper, we can do that too. Easy way to do that is to either convert this to a smart layer. Or, um, or have done it actually in the beginning. If you're not in Photoshop Creative Cloud, you would have needed to do this when this uh, image opened up in Camera Raw and have a smart object if you want to get back to Camera Raw. That's really the easiest way. Um, if you're in Creative Cloud version of Photoshop, so to, uh, Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015 or 2014, then you're lucky enough to have Camera Raw as a filter. So if you just come into Camera Raw and select the filter, it takes the image back into Camera Raw, you don't see any of that texture, the highlights, because we're on this layer. And at this point, we can add, just like we did in the last image, go to the details and add sharpening. So turn some sharpening on, use the mask. It starts out all white. As we move to the right, we start to refine the edges that are going to be impacted by the sharpening. And in this case, I really just want it to be that top flower, so about 87. And now I can manipulate how much sharpening is going to happen. Hit OK. And now that sharpening's been uh, added to the image. So lots that you can do from this point forward. This technique is one of the easiest, most simple ways to get a texture into your uh, base image. And you can add as many layers as you want, as you just saw here. It's a great way to take our images to the next level. Hope you enjoyed watching.